All right, in this next uh, quick little video, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about skin color. Um, you know, what what uh, causes the you know, different skin colors and um, why you see so much variation amongst, well, not so much, but enough variation among skin color between races and geographic locations of people. So, um, skin color is mainly in, you know, skin color primarily comes from uh, three, three different sources. All right, one, the main source that naturally arises within the skin is melanin. Okay, melanin is a pigment that is a product of member melanocytes, okay, that are found towards the basal layer of the epidermis. Okay, so these just produce and secrete, um, you know, this, this protein pigment melanin into the epidermis, and then um, it stays within kind of the middle of the lower layers of the epidermis, and then that allows for coloration of skin. Okay, most, I mean, melanin for the most part um, kind of comes in two different forms and a very very dark, deep black color, and there are some forms of melanin that take on more of a kind of like a lighter tone, like a reddish, rusty color. Okay, but for the most part, I mean, think of melanin as about the same color as this part. Okay, because there's other parts of the body where you're going to find melanin as well. For example, the inside of the eyeball contains a lot of melanin for trapping light. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get to chapter 16. But melanin is found more than the skin. Okay, so melanin is one source. Another source is Carotene, okay, um, and then the other source is basically I'm going to abbreviate this hemoglobin, okay, or abbreviated HB, okay. So, um, so, so the kind of, so the different combinations of melanin, carotene, and well, mainly melanin and carotene um, basically influence the color of one's skin. All right. And like I said, now, like I said, melanin is the, is the pigment that naturally arises from skin. Okay, these other two sources come from the, you know, the bloodstream and fat and other tissues that will influence the, you know, skin color as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, why you see so much variation among skin color. And the biggest reason why, I mean, obviously outside of genetics, would be geography. Okay, geography. Okay, you're... you're your, you know, where you are ancestrally from, your geographic location will ultimately play a very large role in um, the, you know, the color and tone of your skin. You know, folks that are from, you know, the Middle East, Africa, Central America, um, you know, the Southeast Asian countries that are very close to the equator have the most direct contact with sunlight. Okay, and remember, ultraviolet radiation, UV radiation from the sun okay, can be harmful to us, okay, because remember, radiation is energy, all right, and, and as that energy works its way down in, in through the layers of the epidermis, if you're exposed to enough of the right type of radiation, UVC light, um, that could potentially damage, you know, the keratinocytes in your skin, all right, and as a result, that forces your skin to produce more melanin. So, for example, if you're a person of lighter complexion, and you spend time outside doing yard work or just being outside on a nice sunny day, um, or you go in to, to get a tan, you know, what happens is you bombard your skin with this ultraviolet radiation, and then it damages the keratinocytes. And then what happens as you damage these keratinocytes, that forces the surrounding melanocytes, okay, to produce more pigment, to produce more melanin. Okay, so then the melanin levels, as the melanin levels in your skin rise, that gives you a darker tone in your skin, hence the tan. That's what happens when you go tan. Okay. Now, the problem with this, though, is it can be potentially dangerous because over time, you know, I mean, one, I mean, you know that as you age, your cells don't turn over like they used to. And two, depending on how much sun you're exposed to, could start to cause a lot of damage to your skin that you, that you may not be able to turn around and repair so as a result, this can lead to the, to the damage of DNA of these keratinocytes and as a result, um, cause, as you know, when you damage DNA, it can cause mutations in cells, which leads to cancer. Okay, so overexposure to sun can cause this, all right? Also, um, <clears throat> excuse me, also as you break down you know, as you, as you break, you know, as sunlight hits the skin, you break down some folic acid uh, that you have stored in your skin as well. And, you know, for a pregnant mother, that could be potentially dangerous. So, I mean, if the mother's pregnant, do not tan. 
because, you know, the baby's going to need some, you know, as much folic acid as possible, not just from the diet, but from the mother itself, because folic acid is used for proper development of the nervous system. Okay, so as a result, if that baby becomes deficient in folic acid, they may have neurological disorders. All right, so keep that in mind as well. Plus, you know, the tough, leathery skin and everything else. I mean, that comes with anyway. So people that, that, that are descendants from or actually grew up around the equator are going to have darker skin tones on average. Okay, whereas people who are more in the, you know, in the temperate uh, atmospheres, you know, especially the northern hemispheres of the world, where you just don't see as much sun, um, are going to have more of a pale complexion. All right, and that's, the, and that's due to a lack of melanin. Okay, that's due to a lack of melanin in the skin. All right, so I mean, basically, it's fairly simple. The surrounding keratinocytes are just not in, are just not exposed to as much UV sunlight as you know the people from the equator uh, are. So then, as a result, the mel the melanocytes, you know, they I mean, you just produce as much melanin as you need. Okay, and as a result, you know, due to the lack of exposure of sunlight, um, you're not going to you know people from those areas, you know, like the UK, Northern Europe. Um, you know, the northern, you know, the, you know, Siberia, the you know, northern parts of Russia, Canada, areas like that, you know, they just don't see as much sun. Okay, so as a result, they have less melanin in their skin. You know, their body does not need to waste energy producing melanin if they're not exposed to the energy from the sun. So that's why they have the more pale complexion and also, at the same time, have a much greater risk of skin cancer because that's the job of melan melanin. It's a protein that's designed to block ultraviolet sunlight from damaging keratinocytes in the skin, okay? So that, I mean, that's why amongst the, you know, the black and Middle Eastern populations, though, or, you know, or anybody who's, you know, of a more dark complexion, you see a lot less cases of skin cancer than you do in the more, the, the Caucasian population, you know, the more pale skin population, all right? Um, you know, keratin you find, you know, in the skin as well, um, you know, plus you also find in the underlying fat, Keratin gives a bit of a yellowish, uh, more lighter colored tinge. You know, it's uh, you know, it's believed that uh, that you know, especially people of Asian descent have have more keratin in their skin. Um, you know, hence the slightly yellowish tinge. And then hemoglobin basically is a pigment that you find on red blood cells. Okay, so no one really, so no one has hemoglobin or naturally found in the skin. All right, that that you know, you, you know, people, you know, and hemoglobin is, is red in color. All right, so basically your skin turns red and you increase blood flow to the skin. All right, so, uh, what was I gonna say? so you know, in situations, you know, like embarrassment, you know, trying to thermoregulate yourself, um, you know, sunburn, you know, that's why your skin is red during a sunburn because you're increasing blood flow to the area to heal the damaged tissue. All right, you know, that's going to make your skin turn red. So people's skin, you know, I mean, your skin naturally should not be permanently red. All right. Um, so that's basically how hemoglobin influences skin color. Like I said, that just depends on, you know, blood flow to the skin. Um, that's why people who are more pale complexion, again, you can, um, you know, you can see the, the blood flow a lot easier to the skin than you, than uh, someone who was, uh, you know, uh, uh, with darker, uh, was a darker complexion, you know, like African, Middle Eastern, um, or, you know, Southeast Asian, you know, you don't see them turn right as easily because all the melanin blocks the, the showing of the hemoglobin, whereas someone who's a, who has light, you know, like a Caucasian, who has light colored skin, um, you know, they'll be more transparent to, you know, things like care to chemical to molecules like protein and hemoglobin. Okay, so essentially that's where um, skin color comes from. But then there's some terms that you should be familiar with when it comes to skin color, you know, because these are some terms you're just going to see in the, you know, clinical settings a lot and you're going to hear a lot. Okay, one of them is urethema. Okay, urethema. Okay, urethema just means, well, you know, urethro means red. Okay, ema is blood. So basically just redness of the skin. Okay, and again, you see this happen, you know, in, in emotional responses, you know, whether it's anger, embarrassment, laughter. Um, you know, you see this happen, you know, again, with burns, whether it's, you know, sunburn, first degree, second degree, burn, whatever it may be, all right? But, you know, when, so that's basically, you know, when skin turns red, when you increase blood flow to the area, all right? Um, another, um, another color you're going to see, a uh, word you're going to see very frequently is pallor, okay? Think of pallor as pale, all right? Think of pallor as pale. 
All right. So, um, you know, and again, you're going to see this in situations where people have significant drops in blood pressure. Um, you know, they're in certain emotional, again, emotional situations. If someone's in a heightened state of fear, they're going to turn very pale. All right. So pallor basically is the exact opposite of urethema. Um, so a lack of blood flow to the skin is going to help make it very, very pale. All right. Um, jaundice. Okay, that's basically when you see the skin turn yellow, all right, and as the skin turns yellow, that's typically indicative of liver failure, okay, um, when people become jaundiced. Now, not, not just the skin turns yellow, but the sclera turns yellow. The sclera is the white of the eye, all right, so typically when people, when, when they're undergoing liver failure, their liver's dying, it leaks out chemicals into the, not chem molecules into the blood, one of them means bilirubin, basically, which is a... Um, byproduct of iron metabolism. Basically, as red blood cells die, we recycle the, you know, the, we recycle and try to reuse the iron in the liver or, you know, use it as, you know, bile or store it, you know, whatever we need to use it for. And as the liver dies, it leaks this out, and that's what gives the, you know, and as this is in the blood, it's going to leak into the skin and the white of the eyes, and that's what's going to give it its yellow color. Okay. Um, and then if you see, you know, black and blue or black and, you know, black and blue marks or purple marks on somebody, that's indicative of bruising. Okay, and bruising, you know, that's a result of, you know, just damage to the skin, typically internal bleeding of some sort. All right, you know, so, you know, if you take physical trauma to the skin, you guys have all experienced this before, you know, if you actually like, kick the coffee table with your shin or someone hit you or you played a sport and just got contacted really hard. Um, as a result, you know, you're going to, you're going to break open some capillaries that are within the dermis of your skin and blood's going to leak into that area. Now that's blood that's just, just going to sit there. All right. And as that blood basically, you know, uh, clots up and clumps, then that's when you see the bruise. Okay. And that's blood that's not going to be restored to the circulation. That's, you know, eventually as that blood clumps and clots, you know, it's just going to be broken down and it'll go away. Um, and also if people, if people have very massive hemorrhaging, you know, internal bleeding, you know, depending on, you know, where the bleeding is, if it's close enough to the skin, um, you know, you may see bruising as a result of that as well. Okay, so these are just some terms that go with coloration of skin. I mean, realistically, when it comes to skin color, these are the, these are the basics you have to know. Um, you know, so bear in mind, you know, there's a couple different uh, molecules that act as pigments, and also your geographic location plays a big role in your skin color and skin tones and things.